It was once said, don't criticize what you don't understand. Perfect segue and opening to our top 25 that actually makes sense reaction show. And we will take your calls, your questions, your comments regarding anything concerning college football. However, the show is to respond to the top 25 that actually makes sense and your comments and your response to the system, the process, and then the top 25 after week one. All right. So all the comments I'm going to respond to, all the questions are going to be uh, first and foremost toward the top 25. That actually makes sense. And then uh, when we've exhausted that conversation, we may move on to the rest of college football. So we're going to target that first and foremost. Uh, and if nobody in particular wants to call in, although I have I have begged and pleaded and put in neon lights, basically, uh, both on Twitter and also on the um, the comment section to the top 25 that actually makes sense for anybody who's been critical of the process. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Uh, comments such as, you know, I think you've ranked this team too high or too low, or did you consider this? It's not a flawless top 25. Yeah, I, I never stated that it was flawless, the perfect. It's not the top 25 perfection. It's not the top 25 that cannot be um, questioned. That's not the top. It's the top 25 that actually makes sense. Because we've got top 25s, of course, by other folks out there, whether that be the Associated Press, the Coaches Poll, and others that don't make sense. So this one makes sense. That doesn't mean it's flawless or perfect in any way. It can be questioned. I welcome those conversations. And actually, um, and I'm reminded by this each and every year, especially week one, and then I, I uh, gain a lot of pleasure a lot of satisfaction in seeing those people that we win over through the course of the season and say oh i get it now through the first few weeks basically when i'm constantly driving home to a number of people that make comments and criticisms to the process is you didn't listen to the video you didn't listen to the video so we're here to educate that's my calling here at the Voice of College Football. We are here to educate one by one, college football fans one by one. So please uh, jump in as I will drop the link in the chat. And uh, unfortunately, well, I want to be optimistic about it because I'm going to guess that we're going to get all the regulars that are going to call. And of course, the regulars aren't the people that criticize. And again, I don't mind if you question and say, hey, Penn State's too high or Alabama's too low, and this is why. I want reasons why, not just because they're good or they're not so good. Uh, but but I have challenged the folks here in the comments section of the video where we've got 256 comments thus far. And I got to tell you, of course... We as humans, we respond to the negative first and foremost. That's what grabs us, the negative. Uh, but when I, when I go comment by comment by comment by comment, then, you know, I, I, I got to realize and I, I, I um, thank all of you that 80 to 90 percent of them are positive. So uh, let's look at these here. We've got, um, yeah, so a lot of. Positive comments here. We appreciate FSU Gnome, who says, I do enjoy this series of videos. Leave out last year presents and projections just on the field. Yes, yeah, snapshot of time. Go Knowles. And, uh, but let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Because we've got some fun ones here. We've got some fun ones. Mike3883, hope you're here. I appreciate your comment. Basically saying, hey, this is where the fun begins. Uh, Tom Harvey, thumbs up for the hard work and the great content, but those aren't the fun ones. I appreciate, thank you, and I will always accept and always cherish and want the positive comments, but they're not the fun ones to respond to. Uh, these are the ones like, um, you know, like when Port Fans says, nice, nuanced, spin angle, great, that's... Um, 
Tremendous. He says, absurd to say the least. No, it's absurd to assume teams are good or they're not good. That's absurdity. And you know what? Is Syracuse as good as the eighth best team in the country? I don't think so. I don't believe so in any such way. But let's allow them to play it out and show us. But for right now, they took a Louisville team that is fairly highly regarded in the offseason, and they blew their doors off. So reward them. Yeah, so anyway, we'll fill in the gaps with the comments that came in. 257 comments came in, and uh, yes, it's funny. FSU Gnome, uh, love all the outrage in the comments. Tell your friends how much this is a crazy video and send them the link to the video. Yes, please do that. All right, we got uh, Hunter on the line. Hunter, how's it going? Good, Mark. How are you? I'm doing just fine. What's up? Last year, I would have been one of the ones to criticize your top 25 but after last year going through a full gear of it and seeing what you're actually trying to do with it uh even though i might not you know fully agree with it um i, I see what you're trying to do and um so i uh, i respect it well i appreciate that and and yeah uh, for anybody who gets hit with this out of nowhere and they see that syracuse is ranked ahead of alabama i get the initial response that people are going to have to it. But once I explain it, then I, then I don't understand the response after that. So I'll ask you this, um, Hunter. So it, there's a difference between disagreeing with actually where I've got the teams placed. Uh, but it sounds like you actually disagree with the process. No, no, I'm not saying I disagree. What I'm saying was last year, I would have been one of the ones to mm -hmm. disagree with the process. Or, or then the overall way that you've done the top 25, that actually makes sense. But then once I went through a whole year of seeing what you were doing with it, 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 it took me a few weeks of you doing it for me to go, oh, I see what he's doing now. Just trying to reward performance is what I'm trying to do. Just trying to reward performance. So, so now that we've kind of covered that for a second, yes. can, I, can I pick your brain on something else? Um, um, very briefly. Okay, very briefly. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this South Carolina and Arkansas game this weekend? Uh, I think that Arkansas showed in week one that they're probably a better team by a touchdown or so. I, I like them. I like them at, you know, maybe – possibly two touchdowns um you know maybe 14 points i think yeah. they're i think they're i think that they're gonna improve i think some of the things they had you know sloppy because they're having to you got all these transfers and everything but um i, I i'm i'm excited i'm ex kind of excited about this this arkansas team to see where sam Pittman takes them i mean i like the guy i think he just fits at Arkansas for you know for their program absolutely Hunter thanks for joining us tonight we'll talk later this week all right talk to you later I desperately want to stick with the top 25 that actually makes sense as much as possible because I got 250 comments I got tons of people telling me how horrible it is and I desperately want those people to call me that this is my mo going forward and actually has been for a few months like I see people on Facebook um, they'll post these ridiculous college football takes and then I'll push back on it. And then we get into a back and forth and then I let them know, call the next call in show, please, please call the next call in show. Let's talk about it directly. How many people have taken me up on that out of like 50, zero, zero. All right. Will, how's it going tonight? It's going good, Mark. Does my mic sound good? Did I set it up? I don't know. I, I just got a new mic. Does it sound okay? Did um, So you set up the mic? You didn't uh, use a mic before? No, I was just using just computer the speaker. Laptop. Okay. Yeah. Like I am now and have been for like six weeks now because my mic is laying on the floor over there. Um, but uh, we'll get that set up at some point. But 
anyway, I won't go through the technicalities of why it's not set up, but there's a reason. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Mm -hmm. You're 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 reaching for the big time here. <laughs> One thing that surprised me a bit was that you had teams that lost on the top 25 that actually makes sense. I did. I wrestled mm -hmm. with that a little bit, but I did. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you think they looked better on the field than the team than some of the teams that won? Yeah, and that's that's what it comes down to. So again, I wrestle with making that distinction between okay, this team won and all these other teams won and I'm going to leave them off versus teams that lost. Mm -hmm. So I don't have the list in front of me, but it's scrolling right now. Your your own beloved Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and Purdue and mm -hmm. Cincinnati and Utah. I think those are the only four. Uh, I just feel as though like Oregon. No, just because you mm -hmm. played Georgia, you played the best team in the country, most likely one of the top two or three, just because you stood on the field and you know, hit the other guy doesn't just validate your season because to date, because you took a beating. So I, I need to see impressive performance out of those teams that lost. That's the point to be made there. I'm looking at the, I like, I like enjoying the comments. I'm looking at the comments of the video. And this one guy is really angry that North Carolina got on the list. I get it. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. understand being angry about it. Yeah, um, he's a little agitated. But. You know, for example, Oklahoma is not in the top 25. So, you know, I, I could understand people going nuts about that. But mm -hmm. they'll play games that will allow them to show that they should be in the top 25. They didn't mm -hmm. play that game in week one. Mm -hmm. Even though, like, I don't agree with everything on the list, I, I agree with it more than that. I still agree with it already more than the AP and coaches poll. And one thing that really bothered me with the a AP poll was Florida was completely unranked, and then it went up to thirteen immediately after winning one game against a ranked team. Like, it should. I, I like. I wouldn't be like that angry about it if they were like twenty one, but all the way up to thirteen. Like, but I just what do think you think about me having them number four? I mean, I understand because of your formula, but they don't use a formula. They just. Yeah, they just haphazardly know. rank teams. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like. Yeah. My, mine is extremely simple. Well, it's simple throughout the, the entire season, but it becomes more complicated, obviously, because there are more games played. But for week one, simply, mm -hmm. I just evaluated that to be the fourth best win in the country. So they're number four. That's all there mm -hmm. is to it. Yeah. Mm, I really think that they should use your poll for the playoff rankings. I really wish they could did. Well, I would be a bit of a hypocrite. I would love that myself, of course, but I would be a bit of a hypocrite because I, I preach here all the time that, that nobody's rankings should be used for the playoff. Yeah, but you are you do have the most accurate rankings, especially by the end of the year. At the end of the year, yours is by far the best. Well, I appreciate that, Will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I still like what you say about your complaints about it really makes sense. Like, why are these people, these people only vote, like, vote for their team? Like, why do they vote for how other teams do if they only follow their team? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, they're really good at their jobs, most of them, uh, but mm -hmm. their jobs are so narrow that they don't know what's going on in the national landscape. You know, what we do here is mm -hmm. we talk college football all the time and mm -hmm. look at every team and talk about every team and bring on people that are experts on their particular teams. And we talk everything, you know, these individual AP voters, that's all they know is the team that they cover. Mm -hmm. They, they really do. I, I lived it for seven or eight years uh, hanging out with those guys. So I, and it just makes sense. They, mm -hmm. there is no a professional reason for the guy at uh, the, the Jackson Clarion ledger who covers Ole Miss football to care at all about Notre Dame or USC or Stanford. It, there's just, they have a job to do and that's to know everything possible about the, Ole Miss football team. 
I'm a little surprised that uh, TCU. I mean, I know like they beat like a. I know like they didn't play a. All right, Jimmy. We appreciate your money, but I do not appreciate your take. Your money to Mark, of course. But I'm a little surprised. Like I know Colorado is the worst Power Five team in the country, but they TCU did leave them out of the end zone. Like I don't know. Did you consider putting the Horn Frogs in or? Oh yeah, I uh. I, I uh, listed off about seven or eight teams at the top of the video that I had under consideration. Because mm -hmm. the other thing, Will, at times, and I think I only did this once, but I did it once for sure that blow people away, is I did like a top 37. I just chose a number just to mm -hmm. show that there's nothing special about 25. There's nothing magical about it. Like there's... Mm -hmm. The, the 26th best team in the country, theoretically, the best 26th best team in the country. Well, mm -hmm. what, what makes them magically no good to, to be completely unmentioned? And th th there's nothing magical about 25. It could be any number. Mm -hmm. Actually, the only valid rankings from that standpoint would be if we had a rankings that ranked all one to 130 every week. That's what we should do. And that and like I don't agree with his criteria, but that's what Chris Foot does. Like I'm impressed that he does it every week. Oh, Chris with his proficiency yeah. rankings. Yeah. Yes. yes. I mean does. I mean I completely disagree with him, but I think it's impressive that he does all 130 something every yeah. week. Yeah. Like, because again, there's no distinction to 25 versus 26. It's just another spot. Mm-hmm. Another one is that I think is might be a little bit valid. Was that Van? I mean, I know Vandy hasn't beaten like great teams, but they did get two good wins. Two good wins. Two. I mean, good wins on yeah. the scoreboard. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they did. They but did. Were they were they just left out, or were they like left I didn't out? Even didn't consider him. Didn't even consider I just him. Think the opponents are so bad. They're playing Wake this week. If Vandy wants to get ranked, win that one. Mm hmm. Man, some of these people really just didn't even listen to your. I think they just skipped and looked at the rankings. <laughs> My goodness. Yes, I, I get lambasted. I'm used to it. Mm hmm. But yeah. What do you think that Vandy has a chance to beat Wake without Sam Hartman? I don't know. I'm like intrigued in that game. So I didn't even look at the article on Sam Hartman. So he's coming back, but he's, coming back. he's not prepared to play yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be my thought there. So I, I did not look at that. But uh, again, I'm guessing that since he hasn't been practicing, so he's cleared mm -hmm. to return to action. Mm. So yeah, it doesn't say whether Dave Clawson said he's going to play this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Clawson's cautious about a definitive timeline for Hartman's return. So yeah, most likely he's not going to play. So mm -hmm. yeah, and who do you think is more likely to make a bowl game based on their Week One result? Do you think uh, – actually, yeah, you, you pro I probably know the answer now, but like Syracuse or Rutgers. Like, do you think Syracuse is more likely to get to eight wins or Rutgers to six wins? There, that's a better question. To eight wins? Yeah. Syracuse to eight or Rutgers to six. Why does Syracuse have to get to eight? Well, because the ACC is easier. I'm trying to do like a similar okay. accomplishment. Um. Rudkers should get uh, a third win in two weeks. Their next two games are whoever, Wagner and somebody. And uh, yeah, they got to go three and six in the Big Ten. Syracuse, uh, eight wins. Yeah, I got. I guess it's Rudkers getting the six wins. Are we going to do a live watch along to UCF and Louisville by any chance? Live, like like, like we did party. on Thursday, 
And that game's on Friday, right? Yeah, Friday, yeah. Yeah, we've got no college football on Thursday because they're afraid of the NFL, mm -hmm. um, which I don't understand. I'll put a game on at 6.30. The NFL kicks off at 8.30. If it's a really good yeah. game, people are going to hang around. But anyway, uh, a watch party. I guess we could think about that one. Mm -hmm. Well, for one yeah. thing, we've got a West Virginia show at 8. Okay. So I guess we could like do watch it after the West Virginia show. We we could. Yeah. We could. I mean, I don't want to force it on you, Mark, but I, I thought it was fun when we did it on Thursday. You guys did it on Thursday. I didn't do a watch party on Thursday. Well, we, yeah. we were yeah, we were all here for yeah. Yeah, whether it was me or Tim and Tony took the bulk mm -hmm. of the the game. It it is fun, although I just get caught up between are we all just sitting here watching this game or do I have to like comment constantly on what I'm seeing? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to comment constantly on what you're seeing. Okay. No. Yeah. But you need a break. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I still, I mean, LSU, I don't know if it's my Brian Kelly hatred, but LSU at 25 still frustrates me. You don't like that one. <laughs> Well, yeah. think about this. Think about this. And, and this is what's tough because although the rankings become harder to do each week, they, they start to get really hard to do because I'm trying to, you know, when we're like eight games deep, trying to figure out not just, again, I don't do it like the AP or the coaches poll where, oh, um, Notre Dame won and they beat a decent team and they were 15 last week. Oh, we'll pop them up to 12. You know, it's basically resurrecting and revamping the entire thing to say, okay, that Notre Dame, that Notre Dame loss in week one. Well, we thought that was like the best loss in the country. Well, Ohio State's lost two games or seven and two now. It's it's still a good loss, but it's not, you know, and re weighing everything constantly. Um, but think about it, LSU. Had to have a blocked field goal. Yeah, I know. Point, yeah. You know, they were that close to win. Really, the uh -huh. difference between Florida State and LSU from a score standpoint is like as close as you can be. Mm -hmm. I think you got to go for two there. Like, what do you went for two there? Why do you go for two? Because their defense, is win the doing, game their defense that got it. carved up. I felt like uh, Florida State's defense got carved up and they're tired. Well, I, I think it's a valid. Yeah, I think that's a valid point. Plus, um, Florida State blocked a kick earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think Florida State can finish second? Do you think they will finish second in Atlantic right now? I don't like to overreact to week one results. So I'm going to say that I still like NC State better. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for that NC State. I don't know. I just really like... Like Dave Doran to me, I don't know. The guy is really not a likable guy. And he's like another one of those guys I kind of want to see fail. As well. I don't have anything against Dave Doran. I've heard both good and bad things about him mm -hmm. as a person. Like as a person slash coach not like a coach tactician like we would evaluate him but like how he treats players what kind of coach he is as a person mm. uh, i've heard good and bad uh so i've i've posted two pretty harsh videos on dave doran in the past and nothing to do with him as a person just i didn't think he was getting the job done mm-hmm Mm. Do you is there a reason that you put Purdue ahead of LSU? I'm just curious about that also. Because I think Penn State's better than Florida State. Florida State better than Florida State by a significant margin. No, that, not significantly. No. Yeah. Ferris doesn't see, doesn't see how this list makes any sense in the chat. It's a little harsh. Where's Ferris? Okay, Ferris, call. Please call. Please. Like none of these people that criticize this list ever call. Hey, John. Look, it's whiny Will.
Mm-hmm. Ferris, we love you being here all the time, Ferris. You're here mm-hmm. for us, but uh, I'll, I'll be kind to you. I won't tear you to shreds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I think I'm out of things to say right now. Thanks, Will. Hopefully, hopefully we get more callers in. Yeah, so we got a uh, Pac-12 chat show later at Mm -hmm. 10.30, everybody. So keep it right here. I'm going to get off. I'm going to clean the deck so these guys have full reign of the channel. Call in, Jimmy. Call in. Jimmy, Yes, Jimmy, call call in. That'll be fun. That would be tremendous. Would love to see Jimmy touch down. (laughs) You don't don't have to show your face, anybody. You can just do it like a call-in show. No judgment here. Call in, show your face, don't show your face, whatever. We just want to talk some college football. Mm -hmm. Pac-12 show will be fun, everyone. Please tune in. Yes, that's at 1030 Eastern. Mm -hmm. So long, Mark. Thanks, Will. Appreciate it. Oh, Michael, how are you doing tonight? Good, yourself? I am doing just fine. What's going on? Not much. I was thinking about this after, like I said, like I was telling you, I think it was Monday. After everybody in lane base to be about Ohio State, because I was really looking forward to see what they could do. But I was looking back on Ryan Day's press conference. He said there's going to be times to where you're going to have some games like that in the Big Ten, which is true. But I got to ask you this. When was the last time Ohio State had a game like they did Saturday night? Whether it be non-conference jersey, because I can't really sure. remember to where – they, it was a tight game and stuff like that. Because usually it's a blowout. Well, wait a minute. When you say when is the last time Ohio State had a game that wasn't a blowout? Or it was like the, like the, like the game they Utah, had. Saturday. The Rose Bowl. No, no. I mean, not like that. I mean, talk about like they did Saturday night. Uh, defensive struggle. Yes. Well, to that extent, hmm. I'd have to go back to, you know, they won a game against Northwestern in 2016, 23-17. That comes to mind. Mm. Um, you know, the Michigan game of, well, it finished 31-20, 2017, but there wasn't too many points in that game for a long, long time. Ah, uh, Yeah, that's a great question. I can't come up with any Ohio State games that were in – you know, just played in that manner for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Oh, sorry about that. Another thing, I see your pro big, your Big Ten heavy in your top 25 this week. Was you really impressed with the Big Ten? And what made you put Indiana? Was it because of the defense or was it because of the last drive? And did you see where Illinois got robbed on that touchdown in the second quarter? Uh, yeah, I guess they got robbed. Did they get robbed? Or yes. Was it kind of questionable. Oh no! It was, should have been a touchdown. Because he so, came down. With it. Before ahead, we Mark, move sorry. on here and answer your question, um, Ohio State and Oklahoma Baker Mayfield game. Uh, that game was ten to nine in the fourth quarter. Before there were points put up in that game. Was that the game where he took the flag and put it right on the block? Oh, there yes. on the fifty. Okay, yeah. Okay, that was what, 2015 or 2016? 2017. Okay. I wasn't sure. I remember now I remember and stuff like that. But if I'm not mistaken, what is like the last second field goal or a late touchdown for Oklahoma that won that game? Oh, no, they pulled away late. They won by 15 points, but it was 10 to 9 in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. I was wondering. Now, back to the question about. Being Big Ten heavy in the top 25, that actually makes sense. Well, the Big Ten and the SEC are the two best conferences, and the SEC, I think, had a banner week. And actually, I'm going to rank the conferences here. I've got a lot of notes in front of me, and I went through all the results. And uh, I'm going to post a video, hopefully tomorrow, ranking the conferences. And uh, the Big Ten didn't lose a game, Michael. Yeah, they did. 10 or no. Well, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to claim that most of these games were played against decent teams, but Rutgers winning at Boston College. You know, Boston College was supposed to be a seven or eight win team this year, and Rutgers is probably one of the worst teams in the Big Ten. And they went to Boston College and came back from two scores down and won the game. 
So yeah. there's a nice win for the Big Ten right there. Did you think? Did you think that um, Rutgers will probably be around a five or six win team, or do you think they're going to be worse than that this year? I would guess Rutgers is going to go five and seven. Could they eke out six wins? Sure, they they've got to win three in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. So who are they going to beat? Maybe Indiana. Maybe Maryland. Maybe. And then who they've got? Uh, it all depends on who they've got in the, the crossover Western Division. I don't. I don't have that in front of me. I know they play Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know they play Iowa too. So there's two games right there that. Yeah, and both of them. If I'm not mistaken, aren't those in Piscataway? I believe so. All right. Speaking of the Hawkeyes, this is my last thing because I know you got a gazillion callers and stuff, and you only got about an hour or so before the Pac-12, which is going to be a crazy show tonight. If Iowa State, which I think is going to do this this weekend, do you think Iowa State is going to derail and then maybe they'll be a four or five win team this year? Wow. That's that's a low floor, boy, for Iowa. I, I, I don't think so, but... Um... I guess if your offense is that bad and continues to be, it's it's quite possible when you've got to face Ohio State, Michigan, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Purdue. Purdue. I, I, I don't think it's going to get that bad, but uh, it's certainly possible. Shoot, if Texas went five and seven last year, Iowa could go five and seven. Mm -hmm. Because... I don't think they can get it done in offense this year. I really don't. And I don't think the defense is going to be able to keep up like they did last year, even though I'm still trying to figure out how they went 10 and 2. But I digress and stuff like that. All right, Mr. Rogers. Happy 43rd anniversary to your former employer, by the way. Oh, is, is today the day, huh? So I knew yes, it was it is. Uh, in September. We would always celebrate in September. Yes, 1979. Yep. All Absolutely. right. Thank you, Michael. All right. Take care. Have a good one. See you this weekend. All right. We will keep it rolling here at the Voice of College Football. We got Daniel on the line. Daniel, how are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. I can't complain. You know, it was a pretty awesome week of college football. So, you know, not a lot of complaints. I, uh, I got to tell you, it's uh, pretty impressive you're willing to put out rankings that obviously do not fit any of the criteria of any other polls I've ever seen, which... You know, when you do that, you're obviously going to get a bunch of comments of people just saying, oh, what is this guy talking about? Did he even watch the games and all that kind of nonsense? But no, I actually, actually kind I of did like watch the, the games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I'll put a caveat. I actually think your rankings will probably be more accurate the more weeks we have because the best teams will win the best matchups. And sure. realistically, I think by week 12, you probably would have the best ranking system in college football right now. I think this is pretty insane, but like, Hey, I appreciate uh, some of the rankings here are, are pretty crazy. Like at least you understand it though, Daniel, you understand yes. that I'm just ranking the wins. Basically. Yeah. I'm just ranking the performance on the field. I will say though, some of these are mind boggling to me. Like, okay, Oregon State, I totally get because what Jonathan Smith is building up there is kind of shocking. I, I don't know how with these three star recruits and like a running doesn't he have a wide receiver who's like five foot two? I have no idea how they're winning games like this, but good for them. But uh man, you got Arizona at seven. I mean Arizona had a punt blocked for a touchdown because their own lineman got in the way. And yeah, they, they, were a, still, they were still good enough to beat a San Diego State team that is always near the very top of the group of five. 12 and two last year, finished in the top 25. Well, I will say, and maybe this is a sore topic. So it my three lately. Yeah, it's true. I get that. I get that. I'm just saying, and by the way, I like uh, Delora. I think he's a pretty good player. And I like that freshman wide receiver that U of A has. I think it's pretty good. Yep. But, um, I mean, I think San Diego State actually benefited a lot last year because their punter could kick the ball like 70 yards and just flip field yeah, position. Yeah, that's right. They did. Which yeah. they don't have now. And I also don't think they have a running back like they've had 
a couple seasons, like almost in a row now. But they have these guys that just rack up like NCAA records of rushing yards. I don't think they have that. And also, I think this is probably a U of A advantage. It was like 120 degrees at that game, which I don't think San Diego players were necessarily prepared for that. I think they kind of walked in expecting, you know, a 74 degree day with some breeze and instead they're cooking out there and the U of A guys are like, well, this is how we've been practicing the entire summer. So I'm not sure how impressive that win really is. And if I'm, if I'm just projecting U of A, I mean, I'm guessing they probably, I mean, they're better than Arizona state, but I can't see them winning more than five or six games this entire season. And I probably expect San Diego State to win a similar amount in the Mountain West. So then I have to say to myself, okay, well, what's the quality of opponent? You know, I don't think San Diego State is what they've been in the past. And what I really get confused by is so U of A plays Mississippi State, I think at like, what, 9 o'clock Pacific time or something crazy like that? Yes. Uh, And you have Mississippi State at 13. And you have U of A at 7. And then yep. you've got Bama at nine. Yep. And Bama plays a team that's not in your top 25. So let's say Mississippi State goes in to Tucson and mm-hmm. they just put the beat down, which I think will probably happen. I think Mississippi State is a pretty legitimate team with sure. some guys with a lot of experience. Oh, I do and let's too. say I put them nine and three. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're a real team. So let's just say Mississippi State beats U of A by 25 points. Yep. Right, maybe that's a lot, but like let's just claim that they win 48 to 23 or something like that. Would that make you leapfrog Mississippi State over Alabama in your rankings next week? Okay, so Alabama plays who this oh well they play Texas. Who you don't have ranked. Okay. The rankings aren't based on my opinion of the teams. Okay. Okay. But wouldn't the rankings be used? For future weeks to choose the quality of opponent you played that week? Not entirely, not especially at this stage of the season. So let's, well, so you you can also see that um, the performance, which is, which is related to the results on the scoreboard, not just the win or the loss also factors in. If Alabama wouldn't have beaten Utah state 55 to nothing, they wouldn't even be number nine. (laughs) <laughs> you know, if yeah, they, pretty, they, uh, they pretty came like 35 14, they might be like 20. Right. Although, okay, but then that doesn't make any sense to me because okay. Utah State was a pretty good team last year. And as sure. far as I can tell, they returned almost everything they had. Their coach seems pretty good. I mean, they didn't play great in their week one game or week zero. Yeah. But it, exactly. I believe, but I, I have a feeling that this Utah State team especially after what I saw Oregon State did to Boise, is probably going to win a good number of games in that conference. And it's hard for me to believe that San Diego State is better than Utah State. So in my mind, I would assume a 55 nothing win, even if it's at home, is way more impressive than an 18-point win at San Diego State. Yeah, I, I again, I would say that uh, my rankings aren't perfect. There, there's nobody that's going to devise a ranking system that's perfect. First and right. foremost. Secondly, <laughs> they make sense. Um, sure. And thirdly, so yeah, this this week I'm going to add another data point to all the things that you've just said. So we're going to know more about, we're not only going to, so this is what else is different about what I'm doing versus what the AP and the coaches poll and other people do, because they just basically kind of jockey teams back, you know, like a team. um, So I will have wild fluctuations the second week, the third week, and then they start to, you know, because the resumes are stronger and they are more meaningful when you've got five games, eight games, 10 games, than they are when you've got one game and you've got one result. And then you're, especially when your second result is a complete aberration or different result than your first result, then this, 
just wait till next week when the the, the rankings look totally different and people are going to flip out again and say, how can a team be number <laughs> five one week and they're to totally out of the rankings? <laughs> yeah, I actually, I, your I have no issues with changes ex, 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 your, your re The potential of your resume changing in two games is a ton. Sure. Yeah, 100%. I mean. So, yeah, to your point here, we got a, a knucklehead in the chat here who probably won't come on here and talk that says Mark <laughs> Rogers has been exposed. Oh, I, wow. I never said that my rankings were perfect and that they can be, that's why I exposed myself. I've already exposed myself. So, so any moron that says I've been exposed. No, I say this every week when I release these rankings, they're not perfect. They're not flawless because that doesn't exist. You find me the person that makes perfect rankings and just, you know, we'll bring them on here and we can learn from them. They just, they make sense. They make sense. Unlike what we see from everybody else. Mark Rogers has been exposed. That is a crazy comment because first off, I started this by saying, I think in the long run, your rankings are going to be perfectly fine because this is solely based off of week one performances, which is almost always when teams play the lamest of the teams on their entire schedule. So nobody's played anybody. You know, I mean, legitimately, well, yeah, yeah, like a couple. I mean, I think uh, I was I, you having Ohio State at two. I could have almost put Ohio State at one in, in your concept of rankings, sure. because I, I hear all these people saying, oh, Ohio State, you know, they didn't play as well as they should have. Better name is overrated, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure Ohio State just won in probably the best way it could have gone, because it looked like to me they proved their defense is not what it was last year. And I'm pretty sure if I asked anybody, uh, what do you think of Ohio State's offense? They're still going to say that this team is going to score 40 points on almost every Big Ten team they play. So now they have an improved defense, and they still have elite wide receiver core and a top three quarterback in the sport. And – arguably a top two running back in the sport. So I, you know, I, I don't really understand that argument. I, uh, I, I was trying to think in my head, like how would have Notre Dame faced in a similar circumstance on the road against Georgia or Alabama. And I don't think it would have been that much different. I think Notre Dame ran a pretty impressive defensive scheme. I, I'm not sure they could have held Alabama to 21 points, but I think they could have held Georgia to 21 points. I mean, some of the things Georgia was doing against Oregon, I mean, Oregon just got exposed. I mean, I, I read some stat. I'm trying to remember who said this. Maybe, maybe it was like Greg McElroy or something like that. But he said that as amazing as Stetson Bennett played and everyone's freaking out and I saw his, you know, his Heisman percentage went shot up and everyone's just like, oh, I'll get on the Stetson Bennett bandwagon. Well, like he was like 120th of FBS quarterbacks last week when it came to how far downfield he threw the ball. So almost all of his throws were just, they were well set up, but it just led for the wide receiver with good blocking to get all the yards for him. So I'm not sure if that's invented all of a sudden as this quarterback that we didn't see last year. So I don't have a ton of issues with your rankings. Um, I could have put Pitt higher. I think, I, I mean, I, I think the backyard brawl, even though, you know, West Virginia has got some flaws, like they got some real issues, but at the end of the day, I think JT Daniels is probably a top 15 quarterback in college football. Yeah. And he's just on a horrible team. So yep. I think JT Daniels could give a lot of teams uh, issues. I mean, I think JT Daniels and West Virginia probably could have beat Clemson last week. Now, would they have any shot of pulling that off week 10? No. But uh, I think they could have gave Clemson a run for their money. So I, I don't know. I, I would have put Pitt probably higher based off just performance in your rankings. And I probably would have lowered Florida State only because I feel like it's so easy. I, I see all these people like, oh, you got to rank Florida State. Oh, LSU is complete garbage. Fire Brian Kelly. Well, they played <laughs> almost the same performance as far as yes. I can tell. Yep. So, and it was technically on a neutral site. I know that's not totally true, but we'll, we'll say that. 
And, uh, you know, I don't really understand how you couldn't put Florida State and LSU just essentially right next to each other. If you want to put them in your top 25 for playing a Power 5 opponent, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, LSU and Florida State have five-star athletes, and they recruit pretty well. But, uh, I mean, there was just mistake after mistake in that game. I don't think the performance for either team was all that impressive. And uh, even though I give them credit for playing, you know, Power 5 teams – when everyone else was just playing cupcakes in week one, I'm not sure their performance really showed anything that deserved to put them any higher than like 23rd, which is yeah, actually so if, like basically where you have LSU. Yeah. So, so if, um, if I saw somebody else that was attempting to do the same thing and they did exactly what you just stated, they put Florida state 21 and LSU 22, I would, I would have no issue with that. I, I would okay. understand that, but I also the, so the the defense of my disparity between eleven and twenty five is number one, especially after only one game. the The space between ten and twelve spots can be like, like nothing, nothing. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, and then the other thing was, you know, I watched every play of that game, and I think Florida State played a, I don't want to say a much better game, but I. Th- thought that they were clearly the better team on that night that it shouldn't have been it shouldn't have come down to what it <laughs> came down to sure that's true i would agree with that um but you know i mean you got to factor in uh I, you know i'm not sure how focused of a team florida state is i i worry about you know the fact i get it's week one and you can clean things up but this is now what the third year of this coaching regime at Florida State, and I've seen the same nonsense in their games over and over again. I've seen games they should have won many times. I mean, they're like the Texas of the ACC, and and at some point you got to start factoring in trends that these teams, sure, you know, they, I'm like not going to be the guy who says why did you pitch at the end zone? I mean, the pitches can be fine, but they did some things that were just nonsense, I, and I I'm pretty critical of. Uh, of errors that you just did yourself. So like you have North Carolina 24th. I probably wouldn't have even ranked North Carolina because uh, I believe in that game, they got a, there, what was it? That they, they went for an onside kick and North Carolina, <laughs> North Carolina got the ball and then their player ran it all the way to the end zone which made it an eight-point game, which allowed App State to then have the ball again to then have the chance to win the game. When the guy could have just taken a knee or just walked out of bounds, and they could have just ended the game. They would have just been over. App State didn't have enough timeouts, and we wouldn't have even been talking about how uh, the the Clemson transfer almost came back and exposed North Carolina. And I, I just worry when I see stuff like that, and the coaches aren't immediately grabbing the player when they get to the sideline and saying, what are you doing? Like Nick Saban would have been on that guy in a second. He would have just said, no, I'm not going to have that. And the fact that I saw Mac Brown, I don't know what he was doing. He was dancing in the locker room against beating App State. I just start to worry, like, is this going to become a trend? And are they going to do this over and over again? Yeah, when it comes to trying to read coaches and their motivational tactics – um, I can at times understand that they don't want to, okay, the, these guys are athletes. And sometimes, sometimes we hold these teams and these athletes to certain standards to say, okay, well, you're North Carolina, you're playing app state. You need to win by three touchdowns. Otherwise right. this is a disappointment. It's an embarrassment. Da, 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 da. When I think coaches are more dealing with athletes every day, respecting the the effort the athleticism the coaching ability all that on the other side and thinking hey a win's a win and i'll take it any way i can get it and in in the moment hey we survived this could have been ugly this could have been horrible but it's a win we beat a quality sunbelt team that's always one of the best group of five teams we beat them and when we go to the film room tomorrow, then I'll start scolding people and say, celebration's over. That was 24 hours ago. Now we focus on 
we sucked on defense and we <laughs> got to fix things and I'm going to be riding your butt all week. Now, Mac Brown doesn't strike me as that guy <laughs> and right. never has, but obviously he's been successful. But Nick Saban strikes us all as that guy. Urban Meyer strikes us as that guy. Yeah. Uh, less Mac Brown, less trying to think who else uh, seems to have kind of a soft. I feel like Jimbo practice. Fisher actually would. I think he would get after his players. Sure. Yeah, I would think Jimbo. Really, everybody that I think of as a player's coach still, I think, would get after. Like Dabo, Lane yeah. Kiffin, I still see chewing out players that aren't getting the job done. And maybe I'm just sensitive to that because I'm, I'm a young USC fan who barely watched the Pete Carroll era and then had yeah. to watch undisciplined USC players that yeah. they basically got from Compton that made dumb mistakes one after another between three different head coaching hires. I mean, the worst one I can remember was USC was at Utah and they had the win. And it was the year that Sam Darnold went on to win, mm. I think, nine games in a row and won the Rose Bowl. And I yeah. truly believe if they had beaten Utah and they'd been 11-2, and two, they probably would have made the college football playoff that year. But because they lost one more game, Colorado went to the Pac-12 championship to get throttled by Washington instead. Mm -hmm. And USC a beat Penn State, and even that game was a little all over the place. But in that Utah game, they had the win. And a Dory Jackson, one of the best corners at all of college football, literally didn't tie his shoes and fell over and allowed Utah to have like a 70-yard touchdown, which allowed Utah to win that game. And it was the last loss USC had that entire season. It was truly one of the craziest things I'd ever seen in my life. And you couldn't even get mad because the Dory Jackson was so good. It was just like, oh, all right, yeah. well, that happened. Yeah, I remember that game. I watched that game. I don't remember that that play. Oh, trust hmm. me, it, it it haunted me. I, I I swear it was that Utah game. It could have been a different one, but I I still remember that Dory Jackson didn't tie his shoes, and that's why they lost the game. All right, Daniel. Appreciate you being here. And, yeah, I'll uh, let you go. Thank you so on. much. Yeah, we'll talk soon. Thanks. Voice of College Football responding to your reaction. So it's my response to your reaction uh, or to get your initial reaction because we got about 250 comments online. But uh, those are mostly people that uh, despite my pinned comment to say, call me, call me, call me. I'm going to be on tonight at 830. Call me. Uh, they did not. So I appreciate Daniel's call because he had certain criticisms. That's fine. But, uh, you know, we talked through it. And uh, certainly, when I hear from intelligent college football fans, again, I go into this process and I go through the process of doing this, and I don't think that there's any way that that Syracuse is number eight, and there's no way they could be number eleven or number fourteen or number three, or they have to be number eight. <laughs> no, they don't. There's all sorts of perspectives, and. We all have to make an evaluation. So I can't, th these, these rankings would be flawless if God came down and said to start the season, these are how good all these teams are right today. And then I could be like, okay, Ohio State beat Notre Dame by 11. Well, I know that Notre Dame's the eighth best team in the country. So that win equals this, but no. What do we both know about Notre Dame? We know that it's a top 10 roster in college football and they typically finish in the top 10 or 12. And then we can look at last year's team and say, how good were they last year? Well, they were one of the seven or eight best teams in college football. Okay. What, what, what did they add? What did they lose? And then you make an estimation of how good th that particular team is going into this season, but we don't know. There's all sorts of teams that we will determine 10 weeks from now were a lot better than we thought or a lot worse than we thought. And my rankings will have to adjust each week to, okay, what Notre Dame's five and three. Oh, that Ohio state win wasn't really that good. All right. Welcome into the voice of college football. Ben's on the line. Uh, Mark, are you crazy in these rankings? Oh my goodness. No, I'm kidding, Mark. 
I didn't see many people trolling you too much. I just a little bit, so I figured I'd play devil's advocate a little sure. on this side of the ball. No, the one the one flaw that I am gonna point out all year, and I and I'm and I'm and I'm gonna pin you down on this, Mark, is your Ohio State bias. I might, oh, really? I, I, I might, I might be able to give you some leeway right now, okay? Because you got him number two. Before you continue, Ben, <laughs> you know what you should look at before you continue this conversation. Before you okay. should go through all the others. Of course, you're not going to do this. You don't have the time to do this. But if you went through all the other top 25s that I've released and see where Ohio State, where I've had Ohio State ranked, versus where the national media's had them ranked you might change your mind because I guarantee you, I guarantee you that I have had Ohio state ranked lower than the national media more times than I have had them ranked higher than the national media. I guarantee it. Okay. Well, I, and I, I probably believe, I, I mean, I, I believe cause I think I was thinking back to last year and I, I think you were the same, but that's not what I mean by Ohio State bias. Oh, okay. I, my 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 definition of your Ohio State bias has nothing nothing to do with Ohio State and everything to do with Michigan. Okay. But and here and here's where I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna throw at you. Alabama this devastating fifty one to seven win that I'm supposed to be so impressed with. Yes, but Colorado look at you you put Alabama at what nine? What yes. did they do more? What did they do that's much better than Michigan? They played a better team. Well, there's these teams. You're talking those teams that are within like 20 to nothing ranking. I mean, they're they're, they're close. They flip flop throughout the year. It's pretty close. I mean, Ohio, okay. Utah State's all, been a middle a little bit better, but all we have to go on <laughs> then is Colorado State's performance last year and Utah State's performance last year, and then try to figure out is that particular team, any team in the country, whoever it is, are they better now? Or are they worse now? What who what did they gain? What did they lose? Okay. What did Utah State do last year? And what did Colorado State do last year? Oh, let me see. Well, Utah State was the Mountain West Conference champion. Oh, yeah, they got a lot of ones. I didn't realize Utah State did it. I maybe should have looked that up. But I am yes, trying to play Utah I am State trying to play went, devil's advocate. Utah State through. went eleven and three and won the Mountain West Conference and beat a Pac twelve team, Oregon State, in a bowl game. Colorado State was three and nine. Well, I wouldn't be playing devil's advocate if I wasn't on the unreasonable side of things. <laughs> All right. But... <laughs> okay. What was the first thing you came on and said you were going to bury me on? Okay. I'm going to look for it. I'm going to look for it. I'm going to catch it. Yeah. I'll, I'll find another one. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. No, I was kind of curious about what you thought about. I didn't think Utah State and um, Colorado State would vary that much. And I was wondering what your reasons, and I didn't know if you had different reasonings behind that. No. That's so simply I, what it was. <laughs> okay. So I have one question. How do you um when you do your when you do your rankings, how do you do you, and you I'm sure you probably explained this and I missed this. Um do you go by any like um like power index or anything like that? Like uh project talent ratings or anything? No, 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 no. Okay. no. All no. right. I'm not, I'm not predicting anything. Well, like when you get your first, your level, your teams, you're obviously you're going off, you're going off more from last year's than you are by just talent well, on the roster. At this point in the season, yes, there's there's a heavy lean toward how good were these teams last year because there's there's that's all you have to go by. Well, that's all we have to go by, except for as I just mentioned, trying to project who did Michigan lose. Who have they gained? How are they going to possibly be better in certain areas? And obviously we know who they've lost. So how good are they versus last year? Well, at this point, I'm going to project Michigan to be roughly as good as they were last year, is my thought, until they show me differently. And then, I mean, I know this works its way out. You know, as, as far as Michigan is, though, they ended the season as a top four team. So if they're as good as last year, why doesn't that reflect on them this year? 
because I'm ranking them based on who they played. Okay. So you have okay, gotcha. They they so you just results on the field at that point. They they crushed a bad football team. This doesn't mean that I think that I think Rutgers is better than Michigan. Mm -hmm. No, this means that I believe Rutgers beat a better team than Michigan beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and you're just in. The, so that just shows you you're just results on the field at that point is. Yes. You base them, and then you just go base up. You're just basing off results on the field after you have kind of an your initial idea where the teams are at. Yes. Okay. Just All right. Results. Now, that's now it's completely crystal clear, man. All right, Mark. Well, I'm gonna let you go and let someone else go, but I will. I will be. I will be watching for the bias. Okay, you you call me out on the bias anytime that you that you think um, I uh, have been biased <laughs> against the the mighty maize and blue. All right, Mark, you have a good one. Thanks, Ben. All right, Jimmy Touchdown. Thank you so much for the contribution. We appreciate that, sir. Mark, are you putting Marshall in the top twenty-five? That actually makes sense. Next week, when they steamroll Notre Dame, that probably would earn Marshall. What did uh, Marshall do this past week? I got to think that they probably played an FCS team. What did, uh, let's see, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Kind of sounds like Marsha, 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 doesn't it? Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Isn't that what Jan said in the Brady Bunch? Uh, they they played, uh, who they play? Oh, my goodness. Marshall, oh. Norfolk State, yeah. Don't know that we can gain a whole lot from that outing. So, yeah, Marshall beats Notre Dame. Well, I'm going to be questioning Notre Dame then, and then that's going to affect Ohio State's ranking. It's all it's all connected. It's all connected. All right, we got McD here with the voice of college football. McD, what's going on? Mark, you hear me better tonight? Oh, I hear you loud and clear, man. All right, good. That was an issue on my end. Um, I'm going to go rapid fire. Okay. I do have one disagreement, maybe two, but really just one disagreement with your wow. rankings. Pretty good. And um, the only disagreement is I will flip one and two. I think Ohio State should be one and Georgia should be two the way you do it. And the reason why is, and maybe this is just me, I don't think Oregon was the 11th best team going into college football this season. I think the AP pool vastly overrated them going into this season. I had them number 23 going into the season, and I don't think they should be in the AP pool, to be completely honest. Um, this week, I honestly have not looked at the AP pool, really, so I don't know if they're in there or not, but I think Notre Dame proved that they were a top-10 team. I think Oregon, to be completely honest, um, didn't know what hit them. I mean, Dan Lanning on the sideline was just like, he didn't know what hit them. Like, he, he was like smiling. Like, yeah, I'm, so but that's... Think about how dominant Georgia was. Oh, I, I, Oregon's, Oregon's not a bad team. Um, I, go ahead. They're probably going to go what nine and three this year. Um, you would think yes, but um, they have that game against BYU in a week or two. They got to show me something in that game, but um, I would think they'll go nine and three. And I thought Georgia looked like the most dominant team out of anybody. Well. That's, but um, that equals my ranking right there. I thought you do your rankings more based on resume, though. Well, it is a resume. It's a resume of demolishing Oregon forty-nine to three. Like, who else is going to do that? Probably, from what I saw over this weekend, probably Alabama would yeah. be the only one. I would. Would Ohio State? Not for the last time I saw those teams face each other last year. There you go. That's why George is number one. Fair enough. Um, number two, I would argue with you that Maryland should be in the top 25. But um, after what I saw this past weekend. Coming. <laughs> after what um, I saw this. <laughs> me, at least until. Who, who does Maryland have, Nick? They have uh, Charlotte. The, the worst so team. In then second. SMU, right? Yep. What are we going to see out of SMU before that? That's going to have SMU played North Texas and like blew them out. I think like forty-eight to ten or something yeah, like that. So forty-eight to twenty, have maybe. To beat Michigan to make the top twenty-five. Which I don't blame you not paying mail in because uh, that's 
it was a, I would say this. The stadium was only about 40% filled for the opening game against Buffalo, and that's how much I thought Mayo showed up for that game, especially offensively. I thought they completely sleep, sleptwalked through that game. I thought they were very last of days to go to be kind. And I was kind of disappointed with what I saw offensively. Um, I thought they didn't take the Buffalo seriously at all. I mean, they got the win 31-10, but um, I was just very – I, I was disappointed in what I saw. I guess the good news is that I, I know people are saying Hawaii is the worst team in the FBS. I honestly can make an argument that Shaw is the worst team in the FBS. I believe they did lose their quarterback, but they, they look bad. I mean, they lost to William and Mary 41-24 this past weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so, and this is a Conference USA team, so I expect Maryland to beat them. Um, and it's in Charlotte, but I, I was just disappointed when I saw I thought they I thought they were last the days of gold, but they got a win, well one and oh, and I, I have to be happy with that. And one other quick thing, Mark, before I let you go that I noticed this weekend. Um I would rag on Dave Dorn some for the game that he should have lost against East Carolina, but I'm gonna give him a bit of a pass only because I know East Carolina is a bit of a snake pit to play in, and he did end up winning the game, but uh, if East Carolina didn't have kicking issues, they would, NC State would have lost that game. I mean, NC, I mean, East Carolina looked like the better team from start to finish. I mean, that fourth, that fourth and goal stand, where they just pushed the guy back 20 yards was yes. like, great, I thought, but yeah, Dave Doran did not. I mean, once again, Dave Doran playing weak schedules, almost lose. And I'm not making fun of East Carolina. East Carolina, Mike Houston, they're building an excellent thing there. Uh, they're, I mean, they they are a program that is probably going to be really good once the American clears out with all the uh, top dogs in the American. But I mean, Dave Doran once again scheduling weak. <laughs> out conference games to to go four and zero or three and one in, so he could sit there and go seven and five and keep his job. Why the NC State Wolfpack cannot find a way to get over the hump? I mean, he did get over the hump against. I mean, he's getting better, Dave Doran, but it's. I mean, I think they're losing three four games this year from what I saw. Well, so. Charleston Southern and UConn the next two weeks. That's back to a you know a typical NC State schedule. Yeah. But I'll say I'll say this: Jim Moore has UConn playing tough. That might not be an absolute give me. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, I maybe will dust off my Dave Doran, uh, you know, videos from the past that uh, <laughs> blasted Dave Doran for winning thirty eight percent of his games in the ACC, and then scheduling <laughs> William and Mary in East Carolina and Richmond <laughs> so we can get to a bowl game. Yeah, it's just horrible. But yeah, that was basically all I wanted to come on to say. Make fun of Dave Torn and uh that only disagreement I had with one and two and tell you that Mike Locksway has some work to do. McDee in one of the two polls, NC mm -hmm. State was unchanged. They stayed like number twelve in the country based on that performance. They 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 honestly should not I mean, if you want to pit them at like number twenty three or number twenty four fine i mean i still have them ranking my top 15 because that's because i bought into the hype which silly me i should have known better forgetting who the head coach was but um yeah i, I think they're gonna lose to clemson in my opinion um same sam hartman's back uh he got cleared to play football so that is, that all of a sudden that rake forest game is probably Gonna be a coin flip. I'm on. I'm still high on Florida State, despite what I saw in Week One, um, and despite uh, that the guy that does not look like a head coach. I'm sorry, Mike Dorbell does not look like a head coach in my opinion. He looks like a financial advisor, in my opinion. <laughs> well, I don't have an issue with that in particular. <laughs> what I do have an issue with, and I'm not, I'm not the guy that reads, tries to read faces or facial expressions. I'm just not that guy. I always hate the. Uh, the sideline reporters that are telling us, uh, you know, that the team looks really confident or the team doesn't look confident. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I got to tell you, Mike Norvell, after they had that debacle of a pitch play when they're trying to ice the game and then LSU drives at 99 yards in a minute, uh, when they came out for the timeout, 
when the ball was at like the one yard line when they had to throw before Jaden Daniels threw the last second touchdown pass. They were they were on the in the middle of the field with the team. And I got to tell you, Mike Norvell looked like he was in he was shell shocked. He was like, did I just lose my job? He's like got his hands on his knees and he's like bent over. And then he's like looking up in the air and he's just like like this, just looking up at the <laughs> he was. I'm like, I'm thinking, aren't you like in the moment here, your team can still make a goal line stand and save the game. And it looks like you're just out. Like you were just contemplating, like jumping off a bridge right now. Yeah. I, I mean, this was probably the first way like, Florida state game, to be honest, I, I probably watched completely with Mike Norvell as the head coach. Cause they just haven't really been that good. And there was a standalone game. I, looking at him, he, I, I, he does not look like a football coach, in my opinion. That was the one like takeaway I got from him. He looks like a financial advisor or something. And people, and um, I, I mean, people were saying Brian Kelly was a bad hire and all of that. What he's doing is he's cleaning out the program. I thought I said I don't know if I told you, but I have LSU going five and seven this season before the uh, Florida State game. I actually had them missing a bowl game. But Brian Kelly is going to be making playoffs, especially with the new expanded playoffs in the future with uh, 12 teams with those horrible first four teams getting buys. And um, they, well, they're not horrible teams, but like they shouldn't be getting buys. But um, LSU is going to be fine. I mean, he's just cleaning out the program of players that were basically Coach O guys that, uh, to be honest, it was probably – not a lot of good – well, I shouldn't say not a lot of good things, but the focus probably isn't there week in, week out, as much as it's going to be for Brian Kelly. So Yeah, this is a classic example of a college football administration, the, the everybody involved in the decision, hiring somebody who's completely opposite than the previous coach, just saying, okay, this was a train wreck. We need to get away from this. We need to hire somebody who's totally different. And that's what they did with Brian Kelly, and we'll see if it works. I tend to be on your side. Brian Kelly's a really good coach. He knows what he's doing. Great coach. He'll, he'll bring in tremendous talent at LSU, whether he's there or not. But he showed during his last five or six years at Notre Dame that his recruiting went through. Just think about what Notre Dame has been without Brian Kelly post Lou Holtz. They've been a seven and five program forever. Uh, and, and he raised them to near elite status. So, yeah, the, all the jokes about Brian Kelly and he's awful just because they lost one game. He just started. <laughs> yeah. And one other thing, I don't know if you – it wasn't the after-game press conference, but I guess it was the next day or two press conference that he had. Um, I guess the media showed up late or yeah. something. And that before I made that comment, we would have showed up on time if you won. That report should be fired and never allowed in that room again. <laughs> I mean, my, you got to be kidding me. With that. I saw that, McDee. I saw that, and my response was, oh, this person's such a great professional that it de it depends on whether the team wins or loses as to whether they're really, they're going to do their job. Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't be a reporter then. I mean, that's my response to that. But, yeah, it was a fun weekend. It really was a fun weekend of uh, college football, a bunch of great games. Um, it, I, we have some great games this weekend, including the. It looks like Florida's going to be the surprise team, but um, that Anthony Richardson is a Heisman candidate, in my opinion. But um, yeah. yeah, I can't wait to watch it. Unfortunately, my Terps play Charlotte, and I can't get the game because it's on some channel called Stadium. But I expect us to win that game, eh, sixty-three to seven. So, yeah. think you can spend those three hours watching a real game. That is true. That is true. I play, I think Tennessee Pitt play. So I have two TVs down there. I got to find another game right. to watch. But yeah, but I'll let you go, Mark. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Go Terps. We're going to be short. Thanks, McD. All right. Here at the Voice of College Football, this is the big lineup tonight. You're, of course, right here in our top 25. It actually makes sense. Reaction show. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for sticking on topic, but we can talk anything in college football, but would love to get, because, you know, I'm talking to all the regulars here, but, um, and of course the reaction from the comment section of the video, I, I would love to get those people on here. Those are the people I want to get on here to, to talk about the top 25. That actually makes sense. So directly after me, 
I'm going to have some dinner, relax, post a video at some point uh, that's going to upload tomorrow on uh, my conference rankings. But uh, also check out Big Ten Paradigm. That's a audio podcast that we post with the fine folks at uh, College Gridiron Coast to Coast. But um, it wasn't posting there for some reason. We had technical difficulties, so I just put it here on the channel. Uh, so that's why it's in audio form, but uh, I think it's a pretty good listen for about 35, 25 to 35 minutes. It's a podcast about the Big Ten, Big Ten paradigm. And again, Tim and Tony are fired up and ready to roll with the Pac-12 chat show right after me at 1030 Eastern, 730 where it counts in the middle of football country there on the West Coast. All right. We got Porter on the line to talk some college football. Porter. Hey, good evening. How are you? Good evening. Can you hear I'm me? Good. Yeah, can you hear me? Porter. Open up your banner right now. Don't leave me. Porter, how are you? Hello. Hey, can you hear me? I got gotcha. you. What's uh, going sorry on? Sorry about that. I, I got this. I got this new router from Comcast. I think I'm having problems with it. I, I don't know what's going on. So well, uh, don't they said I started on cable slash uh, internet companies because they've let me down too. That's well, supposed to be an upgrade. I, I'm not so sure it is, but uh, uh, anyway, I hope you had a good weekend. Um, it was most enjoyable. Uh, congrats to your to your Buckeyes. It was a good game, I thought. Um, and uh, congrats to I, – I just want to say congrats to everybody out there whose teams took care of business like they should have. Uh, congrats to Bama. Congrats to Southern Cal. Congrats to Oklahoma. Uh, congrats to Michigan, I thought, looked really good. Um, I mean, they, they acted like they're still mad about the Orange Bowl. Um, so, Michigan – I was very impressed with Michigan. Um, but uh, – Anyway, it was kind of, it, but then you see teams like North Carolina and South Carolina and Oklahoma State. And I know they're not blue bloods, but still, I mean, you don't you don't mess around with some of those teams. That's, that was ridiculous. That's embarrassing. Well, um, I would put the North Carolina performance and the NC State performance in a in a different category than Oklahoma State. Just in that Oklahoma State, yeah, they they didn't close well. But they were never threatened in that game. A lot of people saw the final score, 58-44, and thought that they were threatened. They were up 51-15. to They gave up a bunch of garbage points at the end of the game that really there was no way they were going to lose that game. But NC State and UNC, they were on a high-wire act and just were very fortunate to get out of there. Yeah. Yeah, it's um... – I just, I just think the ACC is just. I mean, again, where have you heard this before? Uh, stop me if you heard this before. The ACC is just so weak; it's just, it's pathetic. But uh, um, let me, let me. I tried to call in Monday night, but uh, wasn't able to, to to call in. But let me say this about LSU. I think you and I, you know, have similar memories of things. Um, I want to see if you remember some of this stuff about LSU. Say, starting when Saban got there. Um, it seems like every one of their first year coaches has some type of embarrassing loss to start the season. Um, Saban got there, I want to say in 2000, he loses to yep. UAB. Yep. And then the, and then the fans, you know, just, you know, of course we didn't have uh, the, the, uh, we didn't have chat rooms and stuff like we have now. So it was, it was you know, this stuff was not so ubiquitous back then, but uh but, you know, I can only imagine what the, the LSU fans were saying when they lost to UAB in 2000. Then, I want to see if you remember this game. Les Miles' first game, they're up. Okay. They're beating Tennessee like 20 points on a Thursday night. Do you remember that? So that would have been in 05. Right. I, I don't remember that. Be, well, I don't. Was, no. I don't on know. A it was. SEC game on the Thursday night, huh? Well, I want to say it had something to do with a hurricane that, that hit the, the Gulf. Oh, yeah. And uh, I want to say it was either his first big game or his first game as coach. And they okay. blew a 20, I want to say a 20 or 21 point uh, lead to Tennessee. And of course, you know, I, I, I we, we don't play LSU a whole lot in the regular season. So, of course, I was rooting for him. I, you know, I remember just about wanting to kick my, my TV over. Well, that happened, but of course, you know, Les Miles, um, 
has a you know tremendous tenure there. Um, and then uh, Coach O, he loses to Troy his first year. Well, I don't know. It was 2016 his first year? I'm trying to remember. So, um, yeah, the, the Les Miles game against Tennessee, that was their second game. They beat Arizona State by four points, close game, 35-31. Then they lost that Tennessee game. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then and then they rebound and play us in the SEC championship game. So um my point is, you know, Coach O lost to Troy. Yeah. I want to sixteen. My point is I think Brian Kelly's a fine coach. And, and these people that are I mean, I guess my point is this is what LSU does. I mean, they hire, they hire a coach, everybody's high on them, and then they and then they have an embarrassing loss and everybody just goes nuts. And then and then everything settles down and they end up winning a national championship. So, you know, if you if you're college football scholars like you and I, you know, we just need to remind people, you know, I mean, some 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 programs are just I mean, they, they just have these crazy things that happen to them and um and lsu just that way so uh, these people that are thinking that brian kelly is not going to be successful because they couldn't convert a you know one point um i, I know they didn't look great but the fact they lost a one point game to fsu i mean people people just need to relax he's going to be a fine coach yeah well there's a num a number of analogies we could go to here you know it's like uh you you buy a house and the house is in decent shape it's in good shape you could keep it exactly the way it is and, and you might be fine but it maybe it's maybe the the appliances and everything are 30 years outdated but they still work and everything's fine you could leave it like that or you know if you want to upgrade well what's the house going to look like for the next three months it's going to look like garbage because you're tearing this apart and that apart and and so there, there are steps typically that are taken backwards before you can go forward. Yeah, I think Brian Kelly's going to be just fine at LSU. Yeah. I do too. Well, uh, hey, I was you know watching the Ohio State game, and I was I was thinking, you know, when was the last time Notre Dame had a quarterback that really people feared? Um, and then I was watching that uh, McCartney. Um, McCartney 30 for 30. I can't, the gospel according to McCartney is yeah. really, and they had Rick Meyer and they, they played in the orange bowl. And I just mm -hmm. remember what a great quarterback he was. And they had sure. Pollock and, and all that. But what is, what do you think Notre Dame's problem is about not getting a quarterback? They just, I, I, I'm trying to remember the guy that took him to a couple of those playoffs um, a few years ago. He was okay. What's that? Ian book. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he was okay, but I mean, yeah. Ian Book didn't strike fear, and you know, He's a, he was a top twenty-five quarterback, thirty in yeah. that range. Yeah, he's a good player, but uh, yeah, there was, you know, he played in playoffs where it was like, okay, well, he's definitely there are three other quarterbacks here that are elite, and then there's him. Uh, well, you did miss on Jimmy Clausen, who was supposed to be a great quarterback he did play in the nfl a little bit and brady quinn was a really good college quarterback enough to be drafted you know in the second round in the nfl draft um you know deshaun kaiser was a great athlete he wasn't wasn't a great quarterback but uh, he was an athlete who played in the nfl at quarterback a little bit um I just don't understand it. I mean, they're Notre Dame. I mean, I don't care. It's, I know that they're going through a drought similar to what Penn State's going through right now, and thank goodness we ended our drought. But um, they're still Notre Dame. I mean, they should be able to get a top-flight quarterback. Yeah, they should. But I, I believe, Porter, that if you look through the recruiting rankings that they have brought in top-flight quarterbacks. Maybe not like the number one guy in the country, maybe not Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields, but top five to ten quarterbacks in the country. Like, very highly ranked guys. They just haven't gotten that type of performance out of them. Yeah. Well, i tell you what, it, it was um, it was a great scene. Um, you know, turn, it, was, it was wonderful to just wake up and turn on game day and see all the, you know, two two blue blood pro programs going after each other. I mean, it's just, it's just, um, 
it was just a, it was just a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. It was a stress free, stress free for me, uh, watching my dogs, which was nice, but I'm not going to get to, there's a lot of stuff that can happen between now and end of the year. So I'm not going to get, I'm not going to talk too much trash, but uh, I feel really good about my dogs. And, um, but you know, stuff happens, injuries, uh, suspensions, all kinds of stuff. So you never know what, 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 what can happen. But, um, let's just say I'm a little bit, uh, um, pretty big, um, sanguine. Let's use that word sanguine. There's, there's your word for the day. Yes. Well, it's a great position to be in when you can watch your team just obliterate somebody and the stress is off. Uh, but then you can watch all these other incredible games that go down to the wire. They're crazy good. Yeah. And I, and I hope I will say this, I, I, um, I hope, uh, you know, Eric and, and some of the Oregon, I hope they had a, the people that did make it down to Atlanta. I hope they were, were treated well and, and hope they had, you know, were, weren't, you know, we, you know, our fans are kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes we can be a little bit ridiculous and sometimes we can be, a, you know, very hospitable. It just depends on who you're sure who you get. But uh, I think all fans are that way, but uh, I just uh, hope. Absolutely. I hope the reports are positive um, going back to the Northwest. So, all right, man. Good talking to you. Thanks. Thank you, Porter. See you. Yeah, I'm a big believer that every fan base has its jerks, its knowledgeable fans, its cordial and hospitable fans, its delusional fans, its fill in the blank. The, they're critical fans who are never satisfied, never pleased. Uh, especially if you're talking the elite programs, because yeah, there's a faction of fans that unless you win every game, 75 to nothing, you know, we suck and we need to be better than that. And the coach should be fired. All right. We will keep it moving here. The voice of college football. We got uh, Joe on the line. Joe, how you doing? Is it me? Joe, it's not you. I'm hearing myself from about 20 seconds ago, but uh, hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, there's a faction. Is there any way you can turn that down? Uh, I'm hearing double. What do I turn down? Uh, whatever's playing me from 20 seconds ago. I don't know. I don't know what you've got set up there. I can't. I'm hearing double. Yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you to do. I, I wish I could. I don't know if anybody in the chat's got a, uh, a good suggestion. Do you have two windows open on your laptop? Hello, Joe. All right, we'll let Joe figure that out. And uh, we'll check out uh, the live chat. So basically, let's look at the top 25. And it's pretty simple here. The deal is that I just considered Georgia's performance to be the best performance in the country against a quality team. Now, how good is Oregon? Probably not as good as maybe we thought they were, but um, that remains to be seen. You know, look at uh, 2016 Alabama defeating USC, what, 52-6? How good was that USC team? Well, they were damn good. They finished number three in the country and won the Rose Bowl. They were that good. Now, they weren't on top of their game and had a different quarterback in week one, but it just goes to show you that Georgia may just be that good, that Oregon's not that bad. We all tend to say, well, 49-6, to six. nobody loses 49-6. to six. You have to be garbage to lose 49-6. to six. Well, you know what? Oregon's probably 8-4 and four minimum, 9-3 and three kind of football team. I think Georgia's just that good is what happened there. So best win in the country. And uh, these uh, graphics have left me in the dust. I wasn't able to keep up with them. I focused way too much on number one. But uh, let's run through it again. Ohio State beat Notre Dame. That's the best win on the board. In my estimation, that's the best win on the board, but not in dominant, dominant fashion until the second half. Arkansas beat Cincinnati. If you watched that game as I did, I watched every play of that game. I'm impressed with the Razorbacks, and I have a lot of respect for Cincinnati. That was a close game, actually, if Cincinnati would have hit on some throws in the first half. And, of course, the notoriously awful Cincinnati field goal kicking came to roost there with two missed field goals. 
Pitt beat a quality West Virginia team, a decent. I don't want to go overboard on West Virginia. Sorry, Joey, GBD, Coos, and others. West Virginia is not that good. They're okay. but uh, And Pitt barely won that game. Uh, Indiana with a nice win against Illinois. Um, you know, these rankings are going to work themselves out. So if you're that flustered over or pissed off about any particular ranking, be pissed off after about five or six weeks. If your team's 5-0 and oh, and you think that they've just played this tremendous uh, series of games and I've got them number 21 in the country and you think that's completely unjustified, then, you know, you can get after me. But at this point, just again, I think this is completely uh, not that they can't be different. Uh, the Penn State win over Purdue. Penn State wins against a good Purdue team on the road in the Big Ten. Uh, but the, the Florida win over Utah is a better win than the Penn State win over Purdue. Oregon State, they won that game comfortably. So the final score is, in, is not indicative of how Oregon State rolled Boise. It was 24 nothing in that game. Maybe the shocker score of the weekend to me was Arizona State or Arizona, Arizona beating San Diego State by three touchdowns. Uh, who else do we have here? Of course, Notre Dame's the first team on the board with a loss. Yes, I struggle with that, just ranking teams with losses, but I certainly think Notre Dame taking Ohio State to the final five minutes of the game in Columbus is better as a loss than a bunch of these teams that beat awful football teams. Same thing with Utah. Utah could have easily beat Florida. Shoot, to, to the, the, the point that was made earlier by, I, by someone where I could have had, let's say, Florida State in one position and LSU in the very next position, I could have done the same thing with Utah and Florida, especially since Utah was playing that game on the road. It's a difficult assignment to go cross-country, play in the swamp, and basically Utah... They were this close. They were at the two and a half yard line from winning the game. And I don't know what uh, Cam Rising was looking at, but uh, he certainly wasn't looking at the two linebackers standing between him and the tight end who was planted on his rear end in the end zone. All right, DJ uh, DeAndre's coming here. <laughs> I was looking at a few different things there at the same time. DeAndre's here. Appreciate what's, you being here, DeAndre. What's going on? Hey, Mark, how you doing? I'm good. What's up? I'm, I ain't gonna comment on Clemson right now, but uh, okay. what I found interesting, I remember I saw you had Arizona number five, right? Number five or six, seven, seven. You know what yeah. I find about that? I forgot who they beat. Uh, San Diego uh, State. Yeah, who was a pretty good team that run the ball and some. Yeah, but you remember one time you were talking to somebody and you had predicted that Arizona was going to probably have a decent season or not a decent season, but one more than three games this year. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, and he was like, no, nah, I don't think so. But we got to watch teams like that because not because they're great, but you got to look at the area that they're recruiting. Phoenix is one of the fastest growing areas in America. And, you know, and then you got Southern California right there. You know, that you, some of these teams ain't going to be bad forever. So, you know, so, Look at the comment here by HR Picking Stuff, right? So he hits on a good point with Arizona right here. They got a transfer quarterback in from uh, Washington State, Jaden Delora. He was the Pac-12 offensive player of the offensive rookie of the year last mm. year. 23 TDs, nine picks, really good quarterback. So they upgraded the quarterback position significantly. Plus, DeAndre, Arizona has, do you know how many new players they have on their roster? 50, 50 new players. And and that takes me to what happened with Georgia Tech and Clemson the other night. I yep. think the end that was uh, whooping Miller, I think he was a transfer. And uh, a couple other guys was just transferred. The whole team was pretty much transferred. Because uh, I'd never seen them have a 6-3 corner. And all of a sudden, they got a 6-3 corner and then – the uh, six, seven wide receiver. A lot of people were giving um, what's the guy name um, Andre McCoop a hard time for that um, touchdown that they gave up. But I was like, he was um, the cornerback was in a tough 
area because the running back was underneath and the receiver was behind him, and the re- receiver was six seven. So you're gonna have a hard time with that. I, I thought that was kind of unfair, but you know, with a transfer portal like it is, look at Michigan State last year. All of a sudden, they was one of the best teams in America. Yep. Um, Got a lot of transfers. A kid that transferred from uh, Wake Forest, Walker. So we got to look at stuff like that and see how uh, the transfer portal um, helps them out. But I, I saw your, I saw the comments that people made about me and my crew that do our post game show, and I felt like yeah, a lot of times we were hard on DJ. Some of us is hard on DJ. But also, I gave DJ credit too that I thought the play calling was kind of awful. You come out. After um, I and T and run the ball, like throw the ball, go match the tent and throw that ball down the field and let's see. I know they were sitting in cover too. Maybe they were planning on it, but that's what I thought they should have done. Um, and also get back to the quick game. I don't, I don't know what uh, Specter is doing, but get Antonio Wheels out there. Let him throw the ball, catch it, and let him go. Um, that's what I thought they should have done early. Like, get the ball out of his head, so they don't give him rhythm. But they came out and ran the ball three times. And I don't – I know that one fumble was his fault, but I don't know about the one on the snap. That was kind of harder for me to tell. Was it him or the or the, or the center? Yeah. But I heard a commentator say that he took his eyes off the ball. But you're not going to be able to tell how good DJ's going to be until, him, uh, until he gets to uh, North Carolina State because these other next three games – are really not good defensive teams. So, you know, uh, and if you watch any, I'm sure you didn't, but uh, if you watch any of Wake Forest and VMI, Wake Forest wasn't uh, wasn't really that good on defense. VMI just couldn't hang with them talent-wise. So, you know, um, I think I think Clemson is going to run right through the next three games. Farmers a money game, Louisiana Tech. Yeah, they shut out Miami a couple of years ago, but they're not gonna be able to run with Clemson. So we're gonna so we're gonna see what they do, what DJ's gonna do against um NC State. And that's gonna be the big test. I mean, I, I, the ACC had a good week. I mean, uh well, we only lost two games. I didn't see the Rutgers Boston College game, but I was feeling that Rutgers should have uh I should have put my money on Rutgers. I don't know if you bet on that game or not, but or you talked about that game in your bets, but uh, on Patreon and everybody yeah. that spent some money, I missed it. Yeah, Patreon is the way to go. But I felt I think that game was nine and a half. I was trying to figure out why was it so high, but I also thought that Duke, Duke and uh, uh, that who did Duke beat this past Duke and Temple? I couldn't figure that game out, and I should, and that's what I'm trying to do too is getting away from making stupid bets like teams I don't know nothing about. I bet on Duke and Temple, and I was like, why did I bet on this game? I absolutely <laughs> about about any other t- team. The only thing I remember is a guy transferred for Georgia, and it, it was nine and a half. I said, Duke ain't going to beat nobody by nine and a half. <laughs> and I put the money up there. Yeah, it got me. Did you did you see that coming? Uh, I, I gave no thought to Duke and Temple, I got to <laughs> tell you that. But but I am curious, DeAndre. So you said the ACC had a good week. Yeah. Why, why did the ACC have a good week? What happened? I can think of one good thing that happened to the ACC. LSU, Florida State. Well, I can I can think of two good things. I can uh, you know I'll give Pitt credit for winning a game, although Pitt should beat West Virginia at home, and they barely barely beat them. But yeah, the FSU game, of course, against LSU, and and that was a, a nail biter, of course. But Virginia Tech loses to Old Dominion. Mm, okay. NC State looks at they lucked out, got out of there. East Carolina, the BC lost to Rutgers. That was terrible. Yeah, that was terrible. And uh, then, of course, uh, the the North Carolina performance against App State wasn't the best. That's for sure. So I, I didn't see it as a good week for the ACC. Well, let me tell you something, uh, Mark. Again, I know that people are not from this area, but I went to ECU, and I know about App State because I got friends that went there. 
any time that they play those schools, because those schools are called not, you know, the like kid, like if kid, like if Ohio State finally went to play Kent State at Kent State, how many of your people would have packed out that stadium just to see that game? More than likely, Ohio State was going to win the game, but how packed out would your people have been to go to that game? Like I mean, my people. You're talking about Ohio State fans? You're talking about Kent State fans? Kent State alum or anybody that has any reputation, anything to do with Kent State? I would think that if Ohio State was going to show up at Kent State, that would be a banner day. There would be people coming from, I, I'm guessing, right. coming, coming from all over the place to pack out their little 23,000-seat stadium or whatever it is. But that's my point. ECU probably has just as good a football tradition as Carolina State, and they never come out there to play. They just started coming out to play in the 90s. So my point is, and so does App State probably make the argument, hey, they won with three Division One championships in a row, Division One Double A, and they probably would have said they have just as good a program as State of Carolina does, but those schools never come out there to play them. So – that's big for them. They look they those schools look down. I got you. Them. So that's why those games were closer. And remember, I said it before that we I didn't mean you had this conversation. I was like, Dad, that NC State game is kind of high. East Carolina returned a whole lot of people and then they go get junior college and uh, and a lot of transfers. So yeah, that's the same formula. That we seen Arizona do. It's like, hey, we're just gonna get a lot of people in here and hope we shoot for the best and we get a good mix and we could be better. So um that's how I look at it. I mean, that game is a uh, excuse me, Mark. That game is a uh, that game that game those games are big around here. I, Matter- I got you, DeAndre. We we want to get to this final call before we, we head out. So uh one more thing, like Carolina, well, Carolina goes to Charlotte next year. Watch okay. how big the game is. All righty. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Thanks, Andre. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, last call of the night. And keep in mind, DeAndre and the crew, Edward Craven. We had Jordan Bowman on there the other night. That was good to see. And I, I apologize. I don't know the other gentleman that was on our post game show with Clemson the other night, but uh, Clemson post game on the Clemson channel after every Tigers game. So get on over there. Larry, what's going on tonight? How are you, Mark? I am doing just fine. I want to remind everyone, see down below, we're getting off here in just a minute, clearing the deck for our Pac-12 chat show at uh, 1030 Eastern, 730 Pacific. What you Good, got? I'll be on that one. I'll be on that one, too. Nice. This is, this is Pac-12 related. I was in Gainesville for the game. Oh, okay. And so, two issues. Utah, so if we're going off of original rankings, nobody, you know, Florida's not rated. Utah's rated. How can you have Utah 17 positions behind Florida when they went to their house, really could have could have won whatever, and had that nail biter, and you have 17 positions between them. That's that doesn't, you know. I have to agree more with the AP being Florida 12, Utah 13, than I would Florida being top five, Utah being 21. Because in your eyes, Florida just beat the 21st best team to move to four. No, it doesn't have as much to do with being the 21st best team or the first best team or anything. It's it's a resume and it's not done in a vacuum. If it was done in a vacuum then those would be the only two teams we'd be talking about. And I just made the statement a few minutes ago to somebody else that I, I come away from that game thinking who's better than who. I don't know. Right. Don't neutral know site. Neutral me. site. Who wins that game? Yeah. Who wins it? I have no idea. Eight out of 10 times, you know, I, I think Utah's going to win that game. I just, oh, I do. Yeah. But, I, I don't necessarily yeah. think yeah. that, but I'm more like, I, I don't know who the better team is because they're playing in Gainesville and there's right. a cam rising mistake at the goal line. But th- there are all these slots in between those two, in my estimation, based on one game that are minuscule. There's 130 teams. And so these slots between four and 17 are. They're razor thin. 
they're razor thin. And that's what I mean on a resume. When you're looking at a resume, you know, where they play to me is, is huge. That, that, that's part of the resume. You know, if you have to go look at, look at Alabama going to Texas A&M and losing last year, do you think Texas A&M would have beat Alabama on a neutral site? I, I don't think they would have. I don't think they, there's some stadiums to me, and even Rice Eccles in the Pac-12, Watson, Washington, those stadiums are worth more than a field goal. Mm -hmm. I believe like I Death Valley, there's some stadiums that just, you know, sure. just have more reputation oh, for being harder to play in. Oh, no so, question about it. When people say Vegas says that home fields were three points, I know that's a general rule, but stadium advantage is all it over differs. the place. Yeah, yeah, UCLA, I, 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 there's no advantage <laughs> playing UCLA at home no. or, you know, yeah. there's just some teams that don't have that advantage. I mean, look at Oregon State. Those two, it's a completely different team at home and on the on the road. And so the other point I wanted to make, Mark, is how I like to – how I like to place my AP, my poll is basically if I had to bet my life savings on one team being better than the other. And like you said, I think from six to 20, it's a crap shoot. You know, they're, they're so close on any day, any day, but that, that's how I do mine resume is, you know, if you're a, a Sunday writer and you just look at scores, I mean, that's one thing, but, well, I'm not just looking at the score. I'm looking at the score, but I'm looking at the performance too. Right, right. If if, if Utah loses that game 48 to nothing, then I don't have them ranked. Correct. And, and there's Correct. a lot of criticisms you'll see that were mentioned tonight here and also to the comment section that don't think that I should have anybody ranked that lost a game. And I understand that. Right. Uh, I understand that perspective. I don't agree with it, obviously, because I've got four teams that lost. Well, you could have like look at Notre Dame, Ohio State. Like one of those are going to come up with a with with the zero, but you can't tell me neither one of those teams aren't a top fifteen, top five possibly. Like you said, we've got to see the season play out. But yeah, like you said, an zero and one doesn't mean you should be out of the rankings. It just means you played top notch competition week one. So Absolutely. I can't disagree with that. Yeah. I just I'm sticking up for my Utes and where sure. they really. Absolutely. I mean, they left I four point. I, I was sitting there and we were like, why isn't they, why are they going for the two point conversion? It's too early to chase one point. Yeah. If they would have just kicked the extra point, Cam Rising's not throwing an interception, yeah. which I don't know why he did. Anyway, yeah. They're that's, kicking that's a field a goal win by one. That is so, a tough one. That is a tough one. Yep. But I appreciate yeah. it, Mark. You, thanks for not chewing me on my, on my criticism. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm, I'm, I leave myself open to criticism. I get it. Uh, yeah. Just so it's reasonable criticism and it's fair and it's uh, that's, you know, it's your, I, I it's your system. The, it's I, your I, system. Don't, I don't understand the people, you know, if, if somebody just found me on YouTube today and they'd never heard anything, didn't see all our discussions and just thought this guy's out of his mind and they want to call me an idiot or whatever, that's fine. But I, 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 I find it funny that every so often I'll get a comment from somebody that, that is like, Oh, I've been watching you for years and I've always respected you, but you know, I'm done. You know, they get so pissed off over one ranking. Like they like yeah. everything I've done for like three years and all of a sudden they're done and they're out because they didn't like one thing. I'm like, right. So no, I was like, Whoa, how can they be this much? But it, it's week one. I, I mean, what does it matter? Right. Yeah. Yeah. What, what does it matter? I mean, week eight, nine, that's you're hoping to be a little bit up there, but we, yeah. like you say, we just don't know who's who we don't know who, Ohio State or Notre Dame is really yet. Yeah. So, although I got to say, Larry, I think we've got the, there. There's a higher probability that we know who Ohio State is versus right. us knowing who. Take somebody who's uh, like Penn State and Purdue. They played. They played a game down to the wire, and they're both good, but they're not that good. We think. You know, well, you, what did we get answered by Pitt and West Virginia? Here you do go. We really, I, I don't know exactly how good they are. Now there, there's a Utah, Florida situation right there. Exactly. Yeah. That that game could have gone either. Could have went either way. Absolutely. Yeah. Both both those teams are pretty equal. But yes. where are they really in the overall scheme? Yes. And that's 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 my point. Is Utah, Florida's, you know, was this? 
Yeah, and I but think your argument is a great one, especially since uh, Utah went on the road, and that's a difficult place to play. Oh, it's I, yeah, it was it was horrible. Um, I'll talk about it on the Pac-12. I still got to talk to Tim and the boys <laughs> and bring them up to speed. But anyway, absolutely, and and we're going to bring them on right now. I'll get out of their way. I, I oh. don't want to compete with them on my own channel. So I told them I would get out of their way and get off the air because we can run multiple live streams on the same channel. I do it all day on Saturday and have different post games on, on the same channel, but I don't want to be in their way. I want everybody to head on over. So if everybody hangs tight right here, just keep it right here. I'm shutting down this link, but immediately Tim and Tony are going to crank it up with the Pac-12 show. So we want everybody to get on over there. Shoot. It's 10 times better than what you're watching right now. They'll, they'll bring in 50 people and they have a great time. And, uh, you can jump in to their uh, chat, and I'll be watching. I'm a big fan. They they help me out tremendously by by hosting these shows, and I love them. So, thanks, Larry. It's great for you, you to stop by. Thanks, Mark. So again, once again, um, we're going to shut it down right here at the Voice of College Football, but keep it keep it right here. Just stay right on the front page and you'll be able to grab the Pac-12 chat show. And even if you don't like the Pac-12, even if you hate the Pac-12, you know what? Tim and Tony want to hear that. So love the Pac-12, hate the Pac-12, trash on the Pac-12, rip apart the Pac-12, which, you know, I think you're not going to be too surprised. I have as the fifth best out of the Power 5 conferences, and I'm going to cut a video and post it soon. All right, everyone, Pac-12 show right now. Tim and Tony, get there. We'll see you then.